to learn about puppetry? You do? Okay, follow me. Hi everybody, my name is Miss Christina, for those of you who don't know me, and this here is my very good friend Penelope. Penelope is here to help me talk about my very favorite thing in the whole world, which is puppetry. Penelope is what we call a hand and rod muppet. A hand puppet is any puppet that you work with your hand inside the puppet. A rod puppet is any puppet that's worked with a long metal rod like this one. And a muppet or a mouth puppet is any puppet that has a workable mouth. Since most of you probably don't have a hand and rod puppet laying around at home, we're gonna talk about some ways that you can make your own puppet with things that you already have right at home. The first way that we're gonna talk about to make your own puppet is your standard sock puppet. You wanna get a clean sock and you want a longer one like this. When you get a short sock like this one, you can't quite get your hand in it the right way, so you wanna make sure you get a tube sock. Then what you're gonna do, you're gonna put your hand in the sock, your thumb is gonna go in the heel of the sock, and your other fingers are gonna go up into the top. So it looks like that. Now you'll find when you get it on your hand that sometimes it gets kind of bunchy in the middle there, so what you can do is you can put in a piece of cardboard or part of a Tupperware lid to make what we call a mouth plate. That's the hard part of a puppet's mouth. An easier way that you can help the mouth hold its shape is to take something like a hair tie or a rubber band or something stretchy. What you wanna do, you wanna stretch the hair tie like this and put your fingers through and pull it back around your hand. That gives you a more defined mouth and makes it easier to work. When you make your puppet talk, you don't want to lift the top part of your hand like this because we as people don't lift our heads to talk. We drop our jaw. And so to work the puppet, you want to move your thumb like this so that the jaw is what's making the puppet talk. One thing that's really cool that you can do with a sock puppet that you can't do with a traditional hand and rod puppet is that you can make the face squish up or make the eyes pop out. This is because a traditional hand and rod puppet their head is made out of foam so that it keeps its shape. So you can't see all the fingers moving around inside the puppet. In a sock puppet, you can. So you can do all sorts of cool facial expressions that you can't do with a hand and rod puppet. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is how everyday objects can become puppets. A puppet is defined as any object that is being brought to life on stage. But when you have a hand and rod puppet like Penelope, we recognize her as being a puppet even when she's not being brought to life. This is because she was specifically designed to perform on stage. But some everyday objects can become puppets when you breathe life into them. For example, a book or a scarf or a pizza box can all be examples of what we call, and bear with me because this is a really big word, anthropomorphic found object puppets. A found object puppet is anything that was designed to have a purpose other than being a puppet, that we turn into a puppet when we breathe life into it. The other word anthropomorphic comes from anthro, which means man, and morph, which means shape. So that means that we can recognize human shapes in non-human objects. For example, giving a book a mouth. One really cool way that we can recognize human shapes is with a wine bottle opener like this one. See, we can see a head and arms. But make sure you ask your parents for help with these because they can be sharp. One of my favorite ways to make a found object puppet is with a scarf, like this one. What you can do is you can grab the scarf in the middle like this, and you can wrap it around your hand to pull a knot in it like this. And what that does is it makes a little face and some hair, and it gives you a good way to grab it from the back so you can get a good grip on it. And then you can put your finger into the side of the scarf like this to give him an arm. If you have a parent or a sibling at home that's also interested in puppetry, you can ask them to work the other arm of your scarf puppet. Sometimes it's really fun to develop a puppet character with another person. It takes a lot of skill to try to coordinate those movements with somebody else. Like all forms of theater, it takes a whole team of people to put on a puppet show. So working together can be a really great thing for your whole family to do when you're stuck inside. If you're feeling extra creative, you could make your own puppets with things that you can find around your house. With a little bit of imagination, the possibilities are endless. Plastic spoons like these can make really, really cool puppet eyes. A makeup sponge like this one can make really great puppet teeth. You can even use the cutout part of a tissue box to make a mouth plate. 
Just make sure to ask your parents for help if you're using anything that could be unsafe, like scissors or hot glue. Sometimes you can find things around the house that your parents were going to recycle, and you can turn those into puppets. For example, Harry the Chatterbox is made out of a water bottle. Quentin the Court Jester used to be a paper towel roll. Guido the Pizza Delivery Man is a pizza box. Herbert the Parrot was made out of an empty soap bottle. And Leroy the Dragon is made out of an egg carton. If you have your parents go to the Drama Learning Center Facebook page, you can find a printable worksheet attached to this video that has lots of ideas on how you can make your own puppets at home. If you decide to get creative and make your own puppet at home, I would love to see what you come up with. So have your parents take a picture or a video and post it in the comments below. Your fun puppet fact for the day is that most puppets have four fingers instead of five like we do. That means when you work what's called a hand and glove puppet, that's a puppet where your hand goes inside the puppet's hand to work it. That means that you have to put your middle finger and your ring finger together in the puppet's third finger. This is another puppet that I made. This is Rita. She is here to help me remind you that every puppet that you work is its own unique character. A puppet's not just a prop, it's playing a part in the show. Just like any character you play on stage, it's important for your puppet to have their own name and character voice and personality. So make sure you spend some time with your puppet to get to know them. So now you've got your puppet, but what should we do next, Tyrone? I don't know. What should we do? We're going to talk about a few simple ways that you can bring your puppet to life on stage. One thing that you can do is you can think about giving your puppet breath. This helps to make them look alive. For example, if your puppet's running really fast, they might get out of breath and stop for a minute to pant before moving on. What else? Well, it's important to make sure that the puppet's mouth is moving when they're talking. Oh, uh-huh. Even though puppets have a lot less facial expressions than we do, it is still possible to make them look happy or sad or angry. But it's important to remember that puppetry has a lot less in common with acting than it does with dance. Did you say dancing? I got the moves. Okay, Tyrone. <laughs> Since puppetry is a form of movement, it's more important what the puppets do than what the puppets say. Since puppets look kind of like cartoon characters, we often want to make them really crazy or spaz out. The problem is that then the audience has trouble following what the puppet is trying to do. So it's important to remember when you're working with a puppet that less is more. Because everything that our puppet does is a choice that we've made, even small movements mean something. So make sure to keep your movements small and precise. The most important thing to do with any puppet is to play. Every puppet is different and unique, and so every puppet has different things that they're good at. When you're practicing with your puppet, it can be helpful to do it in front of a mirror or to have your parents videotape you so that you can watch it back. A lot of times when you're working with a puppet, you can't see what the puppet is doing. So we use what's called muscle memory so that we know what the puppet is doing at all times. This means that we've done something so many times that we don't need to think about it anymore. Our bodies remember how to do it. When we rehearse for any show that's got puppets in it, our rehearsal period is usually three or four times longer than it is for other shows. This is because it takes a lot more time to get to know our puppet well enough to perform with it. We already know how to use our own bodies, but with a puppet, we have to figure out all the little things they can do. So it takes us a lot longer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you check the Drama Learning Center Facebook page for all of the previous Teaching Artist Thursday videos. And tune in next week for another new video. Yeah! Oh, Tyrone.